All right, hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Eric, and this is the other C E D H, where the C stands for casual. We are your one stop shop for all things casual, kitchen table, magic, the gathering. Thank you for joining me here today. So, what are we going to be talking about today? Today, we're going to be digging into our very first commander spotlight. We're going to be taking a look at Yarok, the Desecrated. Yarok is two black, green, blue for a 3 5 legendary creature, elemental horror with death touch and lifelink. <sighs> Jesus, that was a mouthful. The most important line of text on this hideous monstrosity says if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So this is Panharmonicon, but better. Do we even dare to call this Plus Harmonicon? Yes, yes, we dare call it that. I feel like there are a lot of different interesting directions that you can take this build, and we're going to be looking at a few different riffs on this commander today. There were three builds in particular that caught my eye. The first one is a recursion slash value build. We're going to be using enter the battlefield effects to recur our creatures, instant sorceries, and everything in between. So we're basically just going to be sticking a bunch of stuff in the graveyard and blinking a bunch of things to get the enter the battlefield triggers over and over again. And we're just eventually going to outvalue our opponents and use that added value to win the game. We're also going to be taking a brief look at a landfall build. Now this route is pretty obvious. Mitch already talked about this build on his channel. I'm just going to go over a couple of things that Mitch didn't go over on his build. If you guys have any sense at all, please shut this video off. And if you are interested in the landfall build, go take a look at Mitch's video that he did on the Commander's Quarters, which I will include a link to that video in the description below. Just go check Mitch's build out. Mitch is way better at this sort of thing than I am, but Mitch has also been doing this sort of thing a lot longer than I have. Again, his channel is just super, super entertaining and a lot of fun to watch. If you guys want to dig into that landfall build, please go check out Mitch's channel. There's also one other build that we're going to be looking into that we're going to call Discard slash Mill slash Resource Denial. Now, this is a build that's probably going to be quite a bit more mean than the other two, but I thought that it was a build that was really worth looking at. So, without further ado, let's get into it. We're going to start things off with our Recursion slash Value build. You're going to want to start with some mana ramps, so we would run things like Farhaven Elf and Wood Elves. Farhaven Elf says when it enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tap, and then shuffle your library. Wood Elves is limited to finding you a forest, but it does bring that land into play untapped. The nice thing about these two is that with your commander, it will double up these triggers, so these will provide a great amount of mana ramp for you. Yavamaya Granger and Solemn Simulacrum are also great in this deck. Yavamaya Granger will grab you two lands into play tapped with your commander. It does have an echo cost, which is not a bad thing in this deck since we're going to be sticking things in the graveyard and digging them back out again. Solemn Simulacrum again grabs two lands with your commander, draws you two cards when it dies with your commander, and there are plenty of ways to recur, bounce, and blink not only Solemn Simulacrum, but the rest of your creatures as well. There are also a lot of really great pieces of card draw that synergize really, really well with Yarok. Things like Mold Drifter and Regal Force. Mold Drifter draws you four cards when it comes into play with your commander. And that evoke cost can matter. You can cast it for cheap and just bring it back from your graveyard and do the whole thing all over again. Same thing with Regal Force. Draw a card for each green creature you control. Doubles up with your commander. And can draw you an absolutely insane amount of cards. The recursion part of this build starts when we look at things like Phyrexian Delver and Cadaver Imp. When Phyrexian Delver enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield and you lose life equal to that card's converted mana cost. Again, Yarok doubles this up and you will lose some life. But we have ways in this deck to mitigate that life loss. Cadaver Imp lets you return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Two creatures if Yarok is in play. Another really good piece of recursion is Sepulchral Primordial. Sepulchral Primordial is going to get you a ton of value, stealing all kinds of dead goodies out of your opponent's graveyard, and will be an excellent target for your blinky, bouncy, necromantic shenanigans. And looking further into the recursion package, we're not just going to recur our creatures, but our instants and sorceries as well. So we would run things like Archaeomancer and Demonic Wall, both of which will grab us an instant or sorcery out of our graveyard when they come into play. And even things like Eternal Witness, Eternal Witness, which simply lets us get any card back when it hits the table. Again, double that number if Yarok is in play. But what kind of instants and sorceries do we want to recur? Well, how about Victimize? Victimize will let us sacrifice a creature to get two of our creatures back directly onto the battlefield. 
We would also run things like Illusionist Stratagem and Ghostly Flicker, both of which will blink two of our creatures and bring them right back into play. Casting either of these with Archaeomancer or Mnemonic Wall will get you into some pretty gross loops. You cast either one of them, blink both of those creatures out, and then when they re-enter, if Yarok is in play, you're getting a grand total of four instants and sorceries back from your graveyard to your hand, one of which could be one of your other blink spells which you would then recast, doubling up the effect again, getting back even more instance or instance and sorceries until eventually you just drop everything into your yard and you just recycle it over and over and over again. If you do get into one of these loops, do it at a point where you are in a position to win the game because once your opponents see you do this more than once, you are going to become a public enemy number one. It would also be worth running your recurrable tutors, things like Rudenscar, Demon, and Sadisi Undead Vizier. Sadisi will force you to sack some of your own creatures. You can sack Sadisi to herself, which is no problem in this deck. You can just get her right back again. And with Yarok out, you can go dig for any two cards and put them directly into your hand. Same thing with Rudenscar Demon, but it does not come with that downside of having to sacrifice a creature. But what kind of cards would you want to go tutor for? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to tell you. You could go with a big expel tribal and finish everyone off with a massive exsanguinate or torment of hailfire. Exsanguinate simply says each opponent loses X life and you gain life equal to the life lost this way. Torment of Hailfire says, repeat the, pro the following process X times. Each opponent loses 3 life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discard a card. If firing one of these off doesn't just kill everyone off at the table, you have a lot of ways in this deck that you can just dig either one of these back out of your, out of your graveyard and do the whole thing all over again. And of course, being in Saltai Colors, you could always just run Villainous Wealth. Because there's no better feeling than beating all of your opponents with 20 of the best of their own cards, because yes, I am that guy. Looking into the landfall build again, I'm not going to go over too much of this because Mitch already covered this build in an episode, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one. A landfall build is probably going to be the most powerful way to build this deck. I have a Simic Lands Matter build that no one ever wants to play against because the loops get so gross that your turns take 20 minutes and then your playgroup doesn't call you for two weeks because your one game took three hours and you were responsible for two hours and 40 minutes of it. But, getting back to the landfall build again, go watch Mitch's video if you haven't seen it. I am going to go over a couple of cards that Mitch didn't cover. A very obvious one is Obnixilis the Fallen. He says when a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may have target player lose 3 life if you do put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on Obnixilis. Doubling this up with Yarok is absolutely crazy, and given the fact that this is a landfall build, you're going to want to build in ways to abuse landfall triggers and drop multiple lands in a turn. If you get set up well enough, you could actually just turn Obnixilis into a 64-64 and just kill someone in one shot. Not even kidding, I've seen those sorts of landfall builds. It could happen with this deck very, very powerful in this build. And on the note of cards that should be an auto include in any landfall deck that can run these run these colors, let's take a quick look at a card called Sire of Stagnation. It says whenever a land enters a battlefield under an opponent's control, that player exiles the top two cards of his or her library and you draw two cards. Think about this for a second. This is insane. This is insane. Every single time your opponent plays a land, technically it is a permanent entering the battlefield, and technically it will cause a triggered ability of a permanent that we control to trigger, which is going to be the Sire of Stagnation. So this means that with your commander in play in Sire of Stagnation, when an opponent plays a land, they're going to exile the top four cards of their library, and you draw four cards. I don't, I don't even know what to say about this. Your opponents are never going to want to play a land again. Oh my god. If you decide to do a landfall build and put this in, this could very easily be the best card in your deck by a long shot. If you guys make this landfall build, please, please, I am begging you, put Sire of Stagnation in this deck. It, if they don't get rid of this in one rotation at the table, they are probably going to lose. And finally, we're going to get into our discard slash mill slash resource denial build. Now, the only downside to this build is if you really want to take full advantage of it, you're going to have to run the majority of your deck to be black. But we're going to round out this build with enough green mana ramp and blue card draw and some other blue mill cards that you should still have a nice balance with this deck. So we'd look at burglar rats and ravenous rats. They are up first. Boy, rats are thieving little bastards, aren't they? Hmm. Anyway, 
Uh, Ravenous Rats is going to ra rob your opponents of two cards when it hits the table if your commander is out, and Burglar Rats is going to force each of your opponents to discard two cards. Caligo Skin Witch will take two cards from an opponent, but it's dependent on paying that kicker cost. And Psychic Symbiont will make an opponent discard two cards, and you'll draw two cards with Yarok on the field, so this include is just gravy. Brutal Night Stalker and Cackling Fiend are other recurrable and blinkable bodies that will cause pain and agony for your opponents, as are Ear Splitting Rats. Jesus, again with these freaking rats. What is up with these things? Again, anyway. Entomber Exarch is going to provide you some added flexibility with a creature recursion option, and Deadeye Tormentor will strip cards from your opponents with the condition that you attacked with a creature that turn. Tar Fiend would work really well if you're running a lot of recursion, sack a bunch of creatures to it, and with the doubled up trigger, you could essentially wipe away two players' hands completely if you so desired. Strands of Undeath is going to be super versatile in this build in that it strips an opponent of four cards when it hits if Yawrock is out and doubles is a really good way to protect our commander. Now as much as we like denying our opponents of cards in their hands, let's also deny them of cards straight from their library. We would run things like Garolf's Mind Crusher, which will mill an opponent for eight cards with Yawrock on the field. And it also has Undying, which really synergizes well with some of the recursion themes that we're running in this deck. We'd also run Homerid Explorer, which will again mill an opponent for eight cards with Yawrock in play when it hits the table. Now looking at this build, you don't have to split the build in this manner. You could just go for a straight mill theme if you wanted to and add in a lot more blue cards that will mill your opponents for a lot more. Or you could just lean really, really heavily into that discard theme. But in either case, you're going to want to build in some forms of blink and recursion to get value from these creatures over and over again. If you want some good cards that will fit in with a recursion and blink sub-theme, please refer to some of the cards listed in the first build path in this video. One last thing that I wanted to touch on is some auto includes no matter what build you decide to run, you're going to want to run some ways to protect Yorog because I would imagine that if you build this deck correctly and your opponent sees some of the shenanigans that you are going to pull, they are going to be gunning for him. You guys that watch my Marwin deck tech will know that I'm a big fan of Alpha Authority and Aspect of Mongoose. Alpha Authority is going to give Yarok Hexproof and make him so that he can't be blocked by more than one creature, and Aspect of Mongoose will give him Shroud, and if it goes to the graveyard, just comes right back into play. Aspect of Mongoose is particularly annoying for your opponents and a really great way to protect your commander. You could also run things like Swift Foot Boots and Lightning Greaves. Swift Foot Boots gives Yarok Hexproof and Haste, and Lightning Greaves will give him Shroud for the very low equip cost of a big fat goose egg. And so that about wraps up the very first episode of our Commander Spotlight. Today we covered Yarok the Desecrated. Again, there are a lot of interesting ways to build this commander. I've highlighted just a few different build paths that you can take in this video. If you guys have any different ideas, please feel free to leave a comment in this video with your build idea, or be sure to hit us up on our Facebook page at the other CEDH. If you guys like the kind of content that we're doing on this channel, please feel free to subscribe and smash that like button. And more importantly, reach out to us and let us know what other kind of content you guys would like to see on this channel. Our very first edition of Tips and Tricks for Beginning Commander Players seemed to go over really well. It's gotten a lot of likes and a lot of people have responded really well to it. And again, we want to thank you guys for all your continued love and support. Again, my name is Eric. This has been The Other CEDH, and we will see you guys next time.